Reboot your credit card with Apple Card. It gives you unlimited daily cash back that can earn 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a savings account. A high yield, low effort way to grow your money with no fees. Apply for Apple Card now in the Wallet app on iPhone to start earning and growing your daily cash with savings today. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners. Subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. is happening everybody welcome back to the jester section hiker podcast your premier podcast with the spotlight on section hikers and i am your host julie jester gayhart i know this was kind of a surprise uh live this morning but not really surprise um i needed to record episode number 157 so i decided why not I am finishing up my second cup of coffee, and uh, I've already got uh, my greens going here this morning. I'm trying to be um, a little more healthy as we are in the spring now and uh, moving toward summer. We are going to take a trip up to Connecticut, which is the gateway to the New England states. And we are going to talk about section hiking through Connecticut today. But before we get to that, I just want to say, uh, give a shout out to everybody that is in the chat. So John, good morning. Appreciate you being here. Alpha Gal, good morning. Appreciate you being here. And Alpha Gal, I got a surprise for you this morning. Roger, if I can click my buttons properly here, Roger with Take a Hike Fitness is in here. And for some reason, there we go. Thank you for being here, you guys. I truly appreciate it. And I did not send out anything about this live. So if you are following over on the Julie Gayhart YouTube channel, and you have subscribed and hit the bell notifications, you probably got notified that there was a live this morning. Over the last several weeks since I started these particular episodes, we started with episode number 154, where we uh, took a section hike through Georgia, all the logistics on section hiking through Georgia. Then we spent some time in episode number 155, Uh, all the particulars of section hiking the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And the last episode in this uh, series, you guys, episode number 156, Hiking Through the Shenandoahs, you guys loved that episode. I got more feedback on that episode than I think I've ever gotten feedback on any of the episodes. So if you gave me feedback, if you put comments either on Instagram, Facebook, or here on YouTube. I truly appreciate it. And Roger in the chat says, Connecticut, yes, I have been waiting on this episode, planning that section this fall. So Roger, you shall wait no more. If you are following here on YouTube, I am flipping over to our checklist. And you guys will notice at the top of the checklist, I have added Our particular partner for these episodes, these specific episodes that I'm doing on this Appalachian Trail Section Hiker Series, and our partner, as you guys know and I have spoke about before, is Hiker Metals, and I just want to show, since we're talking about the Appalachian Trail, I want to show the Appalachian Trail medal here in the video version of the show that is available now on hikermetals.com. You don't have to complete the trail to get this medal. Uh, Wim over at Hiker Medals has 42 or 45 medals available on that site. You can send them as gifts, presents. You can get one for yourself. You can get 20% off by using the code JESTER in all caps. So all you got to do is go over to hikermedals.com, place an order, use the code JESTER in all caps, and you will get 20% off. 
I have gotten some questions via email and over on the DMs in my Instagram about who I follow on YouTube. You guys know 100% we are in the heart of hiker season. And I always follow a couple through hikers. I try to follow their hike if they are vlogging and putting up daily videos. If you have gone over and listened to any of the episodes on the podcast that I do with Austin, it is called the Beyond the Trail podcast. You will know that YouTube is by social media of choice. A couple section hikers that I follow in particular are Alpha Gal. And you guys will see this on the checklist. Alpha Gal is here in the chat. And uh, he is, I want to say, chronically out section hiking the Appalachian Trail. And he is really good about posting his particular section hikes on his YouTube channel rather rapidly. So you guys, I'm not going to pull the full channel up, but you can see here Chris Acone on YouTube, section hiking, go follow his channel. Another individual I follow, Chris says, LOL, it's an addiction. So you are a chronic section hiker, Chris, and I love it. I'm going to go ahead and give you a formal invite since you are out here this morning. I am going to take a break over the summer from the podcast, but when I come back in the fall, I want you to be my first guest. So this is an invitation, Alpha Gal. Say yes in the chat. I want you to be my first guest back in the fall because I want to talk about your section hiking, what you're up to, what you have going on with your YouTube channel, and shame on me that I have not had you on the show. So please put yes in the chat that you will come on. The second hiker, section hiker that I love to follow, you guys, Lucky Dog or Shree has been on the podcast. He is out right now, I believe... He may have finished his current section hike. He was actually going to be hiking into Damascus Trail Days, but I feel like I saw some pictures that he had already made it to to Damascus. So you guys, Lucky Dog or Shree, he's got some great stuff out there on YouTube. And as you know, he created the term, the inside out section hike. So go follow him. Chris says, I think he just finished Virginia. So yeah, so he's got some section hikes out there. Some through hikers that I am following. Taylor, the New Hampshire hiker, she is posting daily videos and they come out at 7 a.m. in the morning. And that has become my morning ritual when I have a break at work. And I think she's doing a fantastic job in getting those videos out. They're anywhere from eight to 10 minutes long, and she's letting you know what's going on on the trail, giving updates, and I did not follow her 2021 through hike, but I have thoroughly enjoyed following her on a daily basis, and you can find her over at the Taylor, the New Hampshire hiker. What I'm hoping for this 2023 through hiker season, I'm hoping that Taylor will finish, she plans to finish her hike somewhere around July, August. And then I'm hoping, no pressure, Hawk, I believe Hawk is going to go southbound on the AT. So Taylor will finish, and then I will start uh, picking up with Hawk, which would be a perfect scenario. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Hawk has made no promises, and I think if he goes this year, it will be hike number eight. Um, of completing the Appalachian Trail. And my overall go-to, and you guys, I watch and follow a lot of people on YouTube. My go-to channels when I need 100% inspiration is Early Riser and John Z or John Sahorian. I thoroughly enjoy watching those six particular channels when they put stuff out there. So go ahead and go over and give all those individuals a follow. I am sure they will thoroughly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get to it. Connecticut is known as the gateway to New England. If you're out on the trail for a log section hike and you start to reach the New England states, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, the air starts to smell different. Things start to cool down, but also the terrain starts to change. And you will notice that if you go out and take a week or so to section hike Connecticut. 
I am going to be referencing the AT Guide pages 161 through 170. And I'm going to pull those up here in just a second so you guys can see that if you are watching the video version. I'm excited because I am actually going to go section hike Connecticut again because I feel like I missed some things on my first round. I have not been through Connecticut since 2015 and there are it's just there's so much to see and do when you are section hiking the 52 miles that are in Connecticut you will see all this checklist that I am recommending if you want to section hike Connecticut that you absorb and take advantage of everything that Connecticut has to offer but you also bookend your trip by starting in New York and ending in Massachusetts. And that will give you 50, or excuse me, that will give you 68 miles instead of 52 miles. And I want to pull up the AT guide if I can make it work. I think I could make it work on here. And the reason I suggest that you start in New York, a city that no one talks about rarely that I've heard, in New York is Pauling, P-A-W-L-I-N-G. Pauling, New York has all the amenities that you need. You can get started there. You can spend the night there. And you could start, you guys, at the famous, if you guys have watched anybody's YouTube channels, if you've looked at any pictures of New York, most section hikers and through hikers always take a picture of the AT Railroad Station, where you could take the train into New York City, and everybody's always sit on the benches there or the big long bench that they have at the New York Trail uh, Station. And I recommend you start your section hike there. You can get to Pauline, New York. You can spend the night there. You can get a shuttle or Uber. You can actually take an Uber from Pauline to the railroad station, parking area, take pictures, have an awesome time, get boots on the ground in New York, and then start your section hike. The next thing on the checklist is how are you going to start this hike? And again, I am considering these episodes that we are hiking north, and you get there, you start at the railroad station, and you guys, I would almost say you don't need, if you're going to backpack the 68 miles, you only need one to two days of food, depending on how many miles a day that you are going to hike. Because in Connecticut, there are road crossings to towns that you could you have easy access to. In other words, I'm not sure when I'm going to hike Connecticut again. It might be next summer. I am going to start at the railroad station and I'm going to have a day or two of food. And you guys, I am going to have fun because there are so many towns, covered bridges, hot dog stands, places to eat. And we're going to hit that here in a second. Chris brought up a good point. I'm so glad you're on here because you can remind me of these things. Right before the railroad station is the Dover Oak. Now, there are two huge oak trees on the Appalachian Trail. The first one that you're going to see is the Kiefer Oak or the Keffer Oak, which is just north of Perrysburg. The Dover Oak, which is, it looks like, two miles before. Actually, you could get dropped off right at the Dover Oak, it looks like, which is two miles prior to the AT Railroad Station. And the AT... Uh, guide says the Dover Oak, the north side of the road, the largest, is, this says it's the largest oak tree on the AT. The girth is 20 feet by 4 inches and estimated to be over 300 years old. Do not drive or park on the roots of the oak as doing so can impact the health of the tree. So, according to the AT guide, it is the largest uh, oak on the Appalachian Trail. But you do have the Kiefer Oak or the Kefir Oak that is back in Virginia. So again, my recommendation, get yourself to Pauline, New York. Get yourself a copy of the AT Guide and start at the Dover Oak and work your way north. So you've got the Dover Oak. You've got the <laughs> railroad station. You're already having a good time. Your first stop 
that I recommend that you do and not miss this is Bulls Bridge. There are several towns and road crossings that you're going to come across. In this first one, you're going to come to a road intersection. I believe it's a gravel road. And Bulls Bridge is your first covered bridge that you're going to have an opportunity hiking on the AT going north to go off the trail. Bulls Bridge is off the trail, but there's a covered bridge. There's a store. It's an awesome place. I think sometimes they have a hot dog stand there, depending on the time of year. The very first day, you have the opportunity to see the largest oak tree, the famous New York uh, Railroad Station, Bulls Bridge, and you've already had an opportunity to eat. And, you know, you're going to have breakfast before you head out on the trail that first day. So you're not going to have to carry that. If you go down to Bulls Bridge and you go to the country store, you're going to have an opportunity to get a meal there. So right there, the first day, you've eaten breakfast, you're carrying your snacks, then you have an opportunity to go down to the country store, depending on the hours and the time you get there. So that first day, you may not have to carry anything with you but your snacks and dinner that night. And let's go back to the AT guide. So that's your first day, you guys, and it is packed with all kinds of information, all kinds of things you could do, and you have your hiking. So we haven't even talked about the hiking. So you're going to see the Dover Oak. I've got the map pulled up here, which is a pretty good map that gives you an indication of what you're going to do all this first day. You're going to see the Dover Oak. You're going to see the famous railroad station. You're going to continue on. And you're going to cross into Connecticut, and then you get to Bulls Bridge, and it says here that Bulls Bridge is 0.3 miles east off the trail. It is 100% worth it, and I totally recommend it. That could potentially be your first day in Connecticut, and by the time you do all that, you are totally going to be exhausted. So that first day is already packed, and you are hitting your way into the New England states where you guys are going to come upon some interesting terrain in that 68-mile section in Connecticut. And what I mean by that is the terrain, once you cross over from New York into Connecticut, you're going to kind of weave back and forth. I'm not sure how many miles. New York, Connecticut, and then finally you're going to enter into Connecticut. And uh, you are going to go along the uh, Housatonic River and you're going to think like, golly, this is like, this is awesome. I'm walking along the river. I'm in Connecticut. You know, the terrain's not too bad. But then as you get into day two, day three, day four, and you'll notice on the checklist, I have some particular um, highlights, I guess, on here. So the terrain... Just like Georgia, I said, Georgia, the terrain is going to trick you. The terrain in Connecticut is going to trick you as well because you are entering the New England states and you are starting to get into the terrain that is going to give you an idea of what you are going to hit in New Hampshire and Maine. And that actually starts with Caleb's Peak. So you're going to hit three different areas probably depending on your mileage and what you're going to be doing either the second or third day that you are out there you're going to hit Caleb's Peak you're going to hit St. John's Ledges and then you are going to enter Sage's Ravine so Caleb's Peak is amazing you do have to work hard to get up there and once you get up to the peak you can look out you can celebrate And then you're going to come upon St. John's Ledges. And St. John's Ledges is this rock formation that you have to weave in and out of. I will tell you a little story about Jester going through St. John's Ledges. So when you get to this rock formation, there are white blazes on the rocks. And there are double blazes that tell you to go one way or the other. And I was totally not paying attention when I started to truly enter St. John's Ledges area and totally went the wrong way. It was climbing this rock formation. I don't even know where I was going. And I probably went, 
I don't know, maybe two or three football field links and realized that I was not on the AT. So I had to climb my way back down and try to figure out where the white blazes were and then continue on my way. Once I found my way, these ledges, they're really, really steep rock steps almost that you have to go down and it's going to give your legs a really good indication of what is ahead. And if you have not been out on the trail and you have not uh, conditioned your legs to uh, terrain that is going to take you straight up and take you straight back down at big rock step downs, you are going to be surprised when you get to that area. But Connecticut, you guys, is one of my favorite states because as a section hiker, it gives you a very good taste of all of the AT. You get a taste of the Southern Appalachians. You get a taste of walking flat along the Housatonic River. And then as you are making your way toward the middle of the state and toward Massachusetts, it gives you a kick in the tail of what is to come in New Hampshire and Maine. So once you make your way uh, through St. John's Ledges, the next thing you can look forward to is Sage's Ravine. And you guys, Sage's Ravine, I can't even describe it. It is, it's almost like this mini ravine and you're walking north and the ravine for the most part is on your left-hand side. And if you are hiking there, you are doing this section in the summer. You have several opportunities to swim and hang out in the ravine. You guys, it's I can't even describe it. So it is a couple miles long. It might be more than a couple miles long. And you're walking along this ravine and there's just swimming holes and rock formations, and it's not easy terrain. It will beat your feet up, but you're going to have a great time going through there. And once you get through Sage's Ravine, you will encounter Bear Mountain. And uh, you guys, there is a Bear Mountain in New York, but this Bear Mountain, I got another story for that too. So Bear Mountain in Connecticut Sage's Ravine kick by tail and Bear Mountain kick by tail. Bear Mountain is not bad hiking north. So you work your way up and there's this huge rock pile when you get to the top of Bear Mountain in Connecticut. And when you start to go down the back side of Bear Mountain, it is like straight. I mean, it is. I can't even put my head the angle that this mountain is. And I just, I had no idea. And I didn't know what to expect or what was coming. And going down the backside of this mountain, it was like I was holding on for my life because you feel like you're just going to slide. Like you just, you know, you're in a sled and you're going to slide down this mountain. And it was tough. It was tough. I almost wish I would have gone south because I prefer to go up instead of go down, you know, steep terrain, but can't do that all the time, depending on what you have going on with your schedule. So just beware. You don't want your pack to be real heavy uh, when you're going down Bear Mountain. And again, you guys, Connecticut, it's just pack full of amazing things. I, I mean, I can't even describe what you are going to see as you go through Connecticut. So again, you're going to start, if you do the 68-mile section, you're going to start at the tail end at the northern end of New York. You're going to have a great few days. Again, I do not recommend carrying more than one or two days of food because um, once you get, you know, hitting these highlights, you've also got several towns that you are going to encounter where it is easy access to get to these towns, whether you're going to use a shuttle driver, whether some of these towns you can use an Uber. And in some of these towns, you may want to utilize the services that they have. You may want to spend the night. You may want to resupply. There's so much in Connecticut. It's almost like 
you want to take your time and not rush through Connecticut and spend a night at each one of these towns. You could actually day hike Connecticut, no problem. If you want to use uh, shuttle drivers or slack pack Connecticut, not an issue. What I would do is uh, take a look in the Bulls Bridge area or maybe in the Salisbury area and see what hostels are around in those particular towns. And maybe you want to slack pack that whole section because you want to spend the night in towns and things like that. And again, my recommendation is to contact the hostels in the area, contact the shuttle drivers in the area, and go from there. And it's kind of like sky's the limit when it comes to Connecticut. I did have somebody reach out and ask me, would it just be easier to pack five, six, seven days of food and carry all of their food through Connecticut? I actually think it would be harder. There's no reason to carry all of your food through Connecticut because if you're like me, you want to see the towns, you want to eat in town, you want to utilize the services, you want to hit the highlights, you want to see the covered bridge in Bulls Bridge. And I just think it's not necessary. It's just not necessary to carry five, six, seven days of food just because you don't want to resupply Take advantage of not having a heavy pack. So I think I left off on Bear Mountain. And you guys, as you get to the northern part, two of my favorite places are Mount Race and the summit of Mount Everett. You guys, the terrain, Mount Race, it starts to get rocky. It starts to get uh, what I call ledgy. You're going to have a lot of uh, rock faces and ledges. But uh, make sure, make a note right now, you either want to have lunch, I would say uh, plan your itinerary around having lunch on Mount Race, and then uh, going from Mount Race, you've got a nice little climb, you want to make sure your belly's uh, nice and full, you've got plenty of electrolytes and uh, fuel in your system. Because the climb up to Mount Everett will remind you that you have entered the New England states on the Appalachian Trail, but you, when you get up there, you can celebrate, have an awesome time. And then on the northern end of that, you are going to be getting into Massachusetts. And uh, if you are going to finish this section, you are going to get out somewhere around Jug End Road. And that will give you a good 68 miles of going through Connecticut. Tons of highlights in Connecticut. Dover Oak, Railroad Station, Bulls Bridge, Caleb's Peak, St. John's Ledges, Sage's Ravine, the wonderful Bear Bear Mountain, the climb up, and I'm going to call it the climb down. You've got Mount Race. You've got Mount Everett, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, Tough climb. Very, very tough climb and steep if you're going north and you're heading down to Jug In Road. If you're going to end your section hike there, it is a steep down, but well worth it. And uh, you guys, just take your time when you go to Connecticut. Utilize the towns. I've got the towns on the checklist. Bulls Bridge, Kent, Cornwall Bridge, Falls Village. One regret I have in walking through or hiking through Connecticut in 2015 is I did not spend more time in Falls Village. There are several places to eat. There are several places to stay. And you can find all of that information in the AT guide. And let's flip back over there real quick because I do want to flip to toward the end here. You guys, I'm just pulling up like There in Cornwall, I'm looking on the AT guide, there are several places to stay. You've got the Hitching Post Motel, you've got the Cornwall Inn, you've got a package store there. There looks to be the Bearded Woods. I've actually heard uh, quite a bit about this place. They do shuttles. It says they are open May 1st through October the 1st. They do shuttles any distance. I want to get toward the end of our hike here. Falls Village that I mentioned. There's pizza places. There's laundry bats. uh, There's the Falls Village Inn and Tavern. 
there's just too many to talk about. And like I said, I do regret not spending more time in Falls Village. There is Salisbury, Connecticut on the northern end. Uh, I do remember going to Salisbury and getting ice cream. So put that on your list. And this is something else I noticed in Salisbury. They have what they are calling a hiker square. And uh, Chris, I'm not sure if you're still in here, but I have not been to this hiker square. That did not exist in 2015. So I don't have a lot of information about that. But you guys, when I go back through, I'm going to go through and uh, see what that is all about. So you guys, Connecticut, if you're looking on the map, it's 52 miles and there is some type of Connecticut challenge. You know how they have the four state challenge in the southern states. The four state challenge is 42 miles. The Connecticut challenge would be 52 miles. And I have heard of some crazy hikers doing that 52 miles within 24 hours. But if you plan to do, if you plan to book in the trip where you're going to start in New York, that northern end of New York at the railroad station there, and you're going to go north all the way past Mount Race, all the way past uh, Mount Everett and end there at Jug End Road, that is going to give you 68 miles. And packed in between there are, I'm going to go back to the checklist here, several towns several places to resupply. I mean, Connecticut, (laughs) you guys, I'm pumping myself up. I'm ready to go back through uh, Connecticut myself. But yeah, so you guys, Connecticut, you got to be careful because Connecticut, remember, it's the gateway to the New England states. And what I mean by that is, depending on what time of year will depend on what you are carrying in your pack. So I went through Connecticut the end of July, the beginning of August, and it was summer. I didn't have any issues. The one thing I will say, it is cooler at night. You can start to feel that cool air. I have had some questions on what to pack in the New England states. And you guys, I might do a separate episode uh, on that. Because as section hikers, we can kind of plan around weather. You can plan not to go to the New England states when you don't want to hike in the snow, when you don't want to hike in the spring, because the spring can get kind of, it can get kind of sketchy when you want to go. And uh, Chris says he's going in the fall so he can see the fall leaves changing. And I'm telling you right now, I'm excited for you, Chris, because going through, say, I can't imagine going through. Uh, Sage's Ravine in the fall. What an amazing, awesome trip that would be. So you guys, we've packed a lot of information into 52 miles if you're only going to do Connecticut. If it's 68 miles, if you're going to add on, hopefully I've talked y'all into going to the Dover Oak. Well, actually, Chris talked us in to going to the Dover Oak and then hitting the railroad station. And then you guys, You're going to hit Bulls Bridge. You're going to hit several towns, Caleb's Peak, St. John's Ledges, Sage's Ravine, uh, Bear Mountain, Mount Race, Mount Everett. And then you will have completed your hike of Connecticut. Roger says, our family is having a cookout today to get our details wrapped up for our Maryland and West Virginia section next month. We will also start our planning for our Connecticut section this fall want to hit the fall foliage. And yes, Roger, 100% on that. Again, I'm jealous that you guys are going to be able to uh, hit that in the uh, in the fall. I cannot imagine what that's going to look. I'm, I'm visualizing Sage's Ravine uh, right now at the top of Bear Mountain in the fall. And that would be absolutely amazing. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, We do have a couple people in the chat here. I do appreciate you joining on this episode. I do have a special episode coming up. I'm interrupting the Appalachian Trail Section Hiker series so we can have on Chica and Sunsets from Chica and Sunsets Hostel down in Georgia. They are wrapping up their northbound season. 
And I had reached out to them earlier this year to see if they wanted to come on the show. And we agreed that they would come on as they wrap up the Northbound season. And not only are they going to be sharing about their hostel and what they've seen this Northbound season, what's happening with the hikers out there in the 2023 AT through hikers section hiker season, they are also going to be talking about their slack pack specials or options that they have at their hostel in the fall, which I think is totally awesome. So I am going to leave it at that. I do not see any more uh, questions in the chat. I do appreciate you guys coming on. I hope, I hope, I hope that you guys are excited now to hike Connecticut, which is packed full of ledges, climbs, food, resupply, plenty of towns, places to stay, covered bridges. I really appreciate you joining me on this Saturday morning. No notice whatsoever, but some of you showed up and uh, we've had a good time talking about Connecticut. Go over and watch some of those uh, YouTubers that we mentioned at the beginning of the episode. All the checklist, all the information for this episode can be found in the description on YouTube. It could also be found in the description or the show notes wherever you are listening to the audio version of the show. I'll leave it with this, you guys. Chris says he might need a uh, pocket hang glider to go down Bear Mountain, and uh, he's got everybody laughing in the chat. All right, you guys. Once again, episode number 157. That is a wrap on Connecticut. Thanks for listening, everybody. Be safe out there, as always, and happy section hiking. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC.